The integration itself isn't that complicated. The way I see it, if you don't have technical knowledge, you can do it with Zapier or you can do it with a bit of coding. I'll show you, trickier, but some advantages. What I really want to talk about is if anybody can do it, shoot you. I promise, no nagging. Oh wait, I apologize. There will be nagging. First, let's give you what you came here for. How to build apps that revolves around OpenAI or how to integrate OpenAI into an existing app. Second, we'll look at how OpenAI has made AI app development really easy and why that's not necessarily a good thing for would-be founders. Just to be clear, when people say integrate ChatGPT, sometimes what they really mean is integrate an open AI model. There are a few, and ChatGPT is an example of an app built with an open AI model. This one just happens to specialize in natural language production and surface level domain expertise. Emphasis on surface level, more on that later. If you want to create an app powered by an open AI model, you need to know your use case, available open AI models, their specialization, and cost. They're not super expensive, but they're not free. Ah, you've been using ChatGPT and thought it was all free? It's a free sample. You want the real deal? It's gonna cost you. Here's a list of available models. GPT-4, GPT-3.5 on steroids. GPT-3.5, understand and generate natural language or code. DALI, generate and edit images. Whisper, convert audio to text. Embeddings, convert text to numerical form. I might have missed a few, there are a lot of them, but basically you've got language models, image models, and audio models. All of them have their place. I know I've said it, but it's important and bare repeatings. It comes down to your requirements. If you don't know, two options. One, look at the models and try to find use cases that fit. And number two, look for a use case, then find a model that fits. These are the steps to integrate an OpenAI model into your app. Number one, get a unique OpenAI API key by signing up with OpenAI. Number two, construct a prompt and a front end for users to interact with, include specific instructions and necessary context. Normally, this means static instructions accompanied with dynamic user input. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. Basically, you create a template and your user fills in the blank. Super simple example, two text boxes on a screen. One text box contains the prompt or static instructions and user input, which changes with every request. Here's an example of an input and output area in a Google Sheet connected to OpenAI via Zapier. Here's an example of a very basic app interface built from local files training template. The input in the first box is part of the prompt sent to OpenAI. OpenAI creates a completion. The second text box receives that completion. Number three, evaluate the response. Was it what your users would have wanted? Adjust the prompt and test until you get accurate and reliable results. Step one and three are pretty straightforward. Step two is the tricky one. And there are two ways to do this if you are someone without coding knowledge. The first and easier way is through Zapier. Zapier is a software as a service that simplifies data transfers between other apps. It's got common data transfer APIs built in. You just arrange what you want. It reminds me of this game called Rocket Mania. You've got a match on one end and a rocket on the other, and you arrange the fuse blocks to establish the connection. Same with Zapier. You don't have to build anything, just arrange what's already there and let the data flow. Good news, Zapier has pre-built connections with thousands of apps. I got my writer to try this method out and he has zero coding knowledge. Like if I had to rate his coding out of 10, it would be balls out of 10. He wrote this by the way, I had no reason to disagree. He used Google Sheets as his front end and let's be charitable and give him that. If you put aside how it looks, it's an app. And his app is for people to get information on African cichlids. What the hell is that? African cichlids are a group of freshwater fish from the African continent. They are really colorful fish and popular aquarium pets. I'm not a fish guy, so I asked Ashraf to explain his use case and this is what he said. In fish keeping, 
fishes can have many common names and this can lead to confusion amongst beginners and even people who've been in it for a while. However, there can only be one current scientific name. So fish keepers prefer to use that when doing research to reduce the risk of wrong ID. And with reflect African cichlids in particular, it's important because a lot of the species look very similar but can have different requirements and compatibility issues. To a random person, this seems random, but it's not. Ashraf is a fish keeper and he's put together an app-based solution for fellow fish keepers. He identified a use case in the niche he has experience in as a founder might. Good job, Ashraf. So this is his African cichlid fact finder that he has decided to name No, You're African. I take back what I said about the good job. <laughs> Users fill in a common name of a fish that triggers Zapier to send a prompt to OpenAI asking it for the scientific name of the fish. And then OpenAI returns that completion into the scientific name column, also via Zapier. Another two prompts, First, when a new scientific name is entered, Zapier asks OpenAI for the natural habitat of the fish based on that scientific name. Second, a prompt asking Dali to create an image based on that scientific name. The integration works, but there is a bigger problem. The facts are incorrect. This is what Ashraf said. Problem is, OpenAI is almost always wrong. It returns wrong scientific names based on common names and wrong habitats based on scientific names. So beginner fish keepers using this app could be misled from the start. A beginner who follows this advice could make mistakes that kill their fish. Now I was hoping that as a safety measure, we could use uh, AI generated pictures based on the scientific name, but they're way off. So for example, Row13's Yellow Labs photo is a completely different fish. This is what a Yellow Lab looks like, but this is what Dali gave me. So if I came across this app, I, I just wouldn't be able to trust it enough uh, for myself or to recommend to other fish keepers. Sorry Ashraf, they all look the same to me. The only fish I know looks like this. Now, Ashraf used Google Sheets to simulate a front end and you could do the same with anything that can be actual front end and is part of Zapier's 5000 app ecosystem. Under their app building section, you'll find all the usual no and low code app builders with pre-built integrations. That's the integration part. We need to address these wrong answers. I appreciate that Ashraf didn't just send in a prompt for something like a haiku about mountains and streams where there can be wrong answers. His prompts have clear wrong and right answers. There's one correct scientific name for a species. And he used the Da Vinci model. That's what powers ChatGPT. OpenAI got it wrong, and of course it did. The model hasn't been trained to be knowledgeable on fish or connected to real-time website scrapers. Ashraf recognized the wrong answers because he knows better. But he's right, a beginner could easily be misinformed. That applies to every other app relying on an untrained model. If you just want to validate an idea or get practice, sure. But for long term, your app can't be giving out incorrect facts. Anyways, that's the Zapier way, the easier way. If you want to run a full-blown app with convenience, you probably need to pay for it. Say you don't want to pay, that's always the low-code way. Yo, turns out Locofi has an awesome guide for people who want to practice connecting OpenAI to an app via code. You're looking at the final stage here, where the Locofi team is using ChatGPT to write out a code for him. Now, the dude makes it look easy because it's easy for him. If you don't have coding experience, it will be a bit bumpy, but this is about as simple as it gets. So be patient and give yourself time. Link in the description. There you go. You get a working OpenAI integration with just a bit more work, but you don't have to pay Zapier a dime. Hey guys, you've just seen that OpenAI has made it pretty straightforward to integrate its AI models into your app. Would really appreciate it if you subscribe and like this video. Leave a comment on which integration method you prefer. What comes next is a bit of a rant, but I promise it comes from a place of love. A love of destruction. Kidding. What is a need you sense among real users? This is your use case. I think you, as in the viewers, you'll be split into two groups. Those who want to include OpenAI or ChatGPT into an existing product and those 
who don't have a product yet, but want to grab a slice of the AI pie. If you fall into the first category, it's pretty straightforward. Find out how you want to improve your app, get your API key, identify the model you need, write that prompt using the OpenAI API playground where you can switch quickly between models and factors in how creative you want the answers to be. Test, 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 and then release when ready. For those who want to build an app that revolves around an AI model, I'm sorry. Uncle Adrian needs to nag a little bit. If you go on to there's an AI for that or any other AI tool aggregator, you'll find thousands of apps. I feel like most of them are just clones of each other. Before you build your AI powered app, ask yourself, do we really need another insert AI app that has dozens of clones with different names? The answer is yes. Users don't want a monopoly, but we need options, not clones. I want to show you how OpenAI has made basic AI app development so much easier. Look at this. These are all official pre-made prompts that sends requests to OpenAI. 48 different prompts, a diverse range of use cases. I see it as OpenAI's way of saying, here are some basic ways you can use our AI model. But those basic ways have been turned into basic apps with clone after clone running around calling themselves AI powered. But how many are just a glorified open AI prompt with an extra screen? Reminds me of this tweet by an indie hacker, John Young Folk. He's expressing how I feel perfectly. I don't want to discourage you from trying. Go ahead and paste the playground prompts into your app builder or Zapier for practice. I just want to encourage you to think of a more rewarding way. A real AI product offers something more than just basic prompts. You can modify the prompt and prompt engineering is its own field. People pay for that. But ultimately, and this is just my opinion, but ultimately, I think AI apps that truly make an impact are those that take the time and effort to fine tune their own models. In fact, if we go back to that tweet, that's exactly what the first reply is recommending. As Ashra found, based OpenAI models are inexperienced and only work if you have no idea what good answers look like. I came across Visual Eye some time ago. It's an AI powered heat map tool. It scans your designs and predicts where draw users' attention. LockEye, the company behind Visual Eyes, conducted large scale eye tracking studies with real people over 100 websites to train visual eyes prediction capabilities. Can't imagine it was easy, but for their troubles, they have a unique product with thousands of users. As far as I can tell, they didn't use OpenAI, but that's not the point. Point is, these models need to be trained to maximize their value. And OpenAI is happy to help you fine tune a model. They charge a fee to fine tune any one of their GPT-3 models to get better at specific tasks and subjects. They even help you transform your data into optimal formats to train your model. You probably have to include someone with technical knowledge for this part because you need to use Python and OpenAI's command line interface. But that's how you build your visual eyes. And just like with visual eyes, no one else can use the model you've trained. It's your model. I go back to the 194 writing apps or there's an AI for that. A question I ask myself when I use some of these apps, if I go straight to chat GBT, would I get the same answer? If yes, I don't think there's a product here. It's a data supply chain. You're asking people to use your way the longer way for no reason. In app development, it's so common to use the latest technology just for the hype. If you're planning to use OpenAI before you have a use case, you're skipping a foundational step in app development, an audience, a problem worth solving. Find those first. If you still need OpenAI, then look at implementation. And as you can see, that's just an API key away. I'll install it for you <clears throat> for a price, but first, you need to come up with an idea worth the effort and expense. OpenAI is not going anywhere and building a generic AI powered app will get you nowhere. Watch this video on how to come up with an app idea customers actually want. Then combine your knowledge of OpenAI models and app idea research and you'll come up with something that addresses real need. That's the plan anyway. Please subscribe, give this rent a like, I showed you how to use the API first, right? You get what you want, I get what I want. Now, let's see if we can find you a million dollar app idea.